Hello, my friends. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Anovella. Today is Friday, and I want to do a top 25 of the best books written in the last 25 years. There's a, a little kitten biting in my hand. That's not. Ah! Ah! Vita! There you go. She will. Ha! Ah, uh, she will uh, <laughs> help me <coughs> making this video. I had quite some difficulty to make this list because, yeah, I before I uh, started this channel, I read mostly in Dutch and European fiction, mostly. So a lot of books weren't qualified to use in this list because they weren't translated into English and what's the use otherwise to mention them. But there are a couple of books that I still will mention because. So here is my list. The first book is La Superba by Ilya Leonard Pfeiffer. Ilya Leonard Pfeiffer is a Dutch author and he lives in Genoa in Italy. And he likes to write about his life and things that happen in uh, Genoa. La Superba is the sort of nickname of uh, Genoa and yeah a lot of strange things happen there there's a lot of humor it is a wild book it's fun to read it is a lot of tongue, tongue in cheek it is Pfeiffer all the way and I love this book I could mention other books like um, Grand Hotel Europa which is absolutely magnificent or his latest book, Alcibiades, which is also magnificent. But La Superba is the one that I really fell for his writing. The books that I mention are just in random order, no particular date. It's just they are um, published within the last 25 years, but there's no number one or number 25. It's all random. Otherwise, I would have to kill my babies. And I don't want to. The next one I want to mention is Shoggy Bane by Douglas Stewart. Oh, what a beautiful book. Oh, Shoggy. You want to adopt this little boy immediately. So it's a beautiful coming of age novel about a young boy who lives with his drunken mom, alcoholic mom. And um, he is such a sensitive boy and he wants to dance and he's actually gay and he wants to but he lives in a very rough rough neighborhood and oh yeah it's there's so much happening and but there's also so much beauty in it and there's hope and yeah it's misery but it's it has a silver lining and it's really beautiful you have to read this book everybody has to read this book at least once in their lifetime the next book is the Nochilla Trilogy and is written by Spanish author Augusta Fernandez Mayo. You can't really describe this book because it is a whirlwind of different stories and strange things happening. Uh, a tree that is uh, the centerpiece of a couple of stories. Um, people on the road, there's, oh, there's so much happening, but it's a whirlwind and it's wonderful. It is an absolute tour de force. I really, really enjoyed this book. Another book that I really enjoyed and is absolutely fantastical, weird, and uh, you, you will read it with with an open mind, you go like, oh, what is happening here? It is Carnality by Lina Wolf. She is a Swedish author, and she wrote a book about uh, a woman that is going to uh, Barcelona, I believe, to write a novel. She has uh, received a big check from a publisher, and she will use the money to stay in Barcelona and write there so she can be alone and focus on her book. But when she is in a restaurant uh, around the corner of her apartment, there's a very sweaty man coming up towards her and he says, please help me. I'm in um, a, TV, a reality TV show and they want to kill me. And they really want to kill me. And um, 
yeah, apparently there's a nun and she has, let's say, uh, yeah, a reality TV show, but it will decide if you can live or not. And the nun is missing a thumb. So yeah, that's all you need to know to read this book. <laughs> it's wonderful. I really, really enjoyed it. And the cover is beautiful. Another book that I really want you to read is a book that I read last year. It won the Prix Goncourt in France. It is a book that is coming out now in September. It is The Most Secret History of Men by Mohamed Mbugar Sar. I'm really looking forward to, uh, towards the fact that you finally have the chance to read it because it's brilliant. It's about a young African author and he has heard about a book that was published and disappeared. And it was published by... Um, an unknown African author. And people in the 60s were raving about it and uh, thought it was a masterpiece. And then after a while, they said, well, it's plagiarism. And but it really wasn't because but they couldn't understand, they couldn't grasp the fact that somebody from Africa and a very remote air from a very remote area was capable to read uh, to write a book like that. And this author, this young new bright author, has heard of this story and he wants first to find the book and, if possible, also to find the author who disappeared. That's the story. It is brilliant. It is. Oh, it. it Oh, it, it's fantastic. It, it's such a wonderful, wonderful novel. And I hope this will be, um, oh, this will definitely be um, uh, nominated for the International Booker. It would be weird if it wasn't. And then I wouldn't understand a word of it. The next book is by Jose Saramago. It's a book that a lot of people have read already. It's Blindness. He has many other books, uh, Seeing, for instance. Um, oh, there, there are so many, but I only know the titles in Dutch. Uh, this is a wonderful story about um, a city in in an unknown country, but we know all know that it's Portugal, and everybody is going blind, and but it's not black that they see; they see white, and also the uh, there's a doctor, and he has the same problem, and. His wife doesn't, and the government decides to put them all, to throw them all into an abandoned institute and throw away the key, actually. And uh, at that time, there's a sort of a new, um, yeah, uh, power dynamic between the people that live there in that uh, institute. They are all blind except for the wife. So she can see whatever what is going on. It's a brilliant, brilliant novel. And of course, he has won also the Nobel Prize for uh, in literature. This is uh, not for this book, but for another book, uh, his previous book about uh, the life of Jesus Christ. Uh, which was also very brilliant. Another book that is probably on everybody's list, but it, this will, will be one of the last, is um, Wolf Hall, uh, the trilogy. It is a, a brilliant uh, trilogy of um, the life of Thomas Cromwell at the court of Henry VIII and all the things that are happening, the political games. Um, it is absolutely a masterpiece, really well written. Oh, she has won so many awards and rightfully so. Then a book that I've never seen talked about, although the writer is quite famous, is uh, Damon, Damon Galgut. He wrote The Promise, where everybody talked about, but actually a better book by him is The Good Doctor. It is the story of um, a medical practice with two doctors, one that is, we call him a, a jamon foutiste, which means that he doesn't really care about his patients. And then there's another doctor who really tries hard to do everything right. But the fun thing is, is that the one who doesn't really care often gets it right, and the other one often makes huge mistakes. 
It is a masterpiece. It is so much better than The Promise. Read this one, The Good Doctor. It is brilliant. Next is are two books that are that go very well together because they have the same same kind of vibe, the same kind of atmosphere, and that is Snow Dog Food by uh, Claudio Morandini. Snow Dog Food is so brilliant. So it blew me away. It absolutely blew me away. So it is the story of um, um, an old man who lives in the mountains somewhere up north in Italy. He lives in a very abandoned area. So he can only go once a year to the village uh, because then um, there's no snow. And he buys everything in that store, stocks up, and then uh, goes back to the mountain. And during the winter time, he's there all by himself because it's it's completely blocked by snow. You can't you can't go anywhere. And at a certain point, is um, so he has stocked up really well, and then the snow comes, and then a, a dog comes, and he does everything to shush him away. But the dog doesn't want to go away, and then finally he starts to feed him and takes him in. And then they find a foot. And the story is about where does that foot come from? A bare foot in the snow. And uh, yeah, that's, that's the whole story that I can tell. But it's not what it seems. So read it. You'll love it. It is a wonderful experience. It's a short novel. So it's the next one, but it's absolutely brilliant. Another book that I absolutely love, and it also has a dog in the, um, in the realm of the book, that is Winter in Maine by Stuart Donovan, uh, or Gerard Donovan, I'm sorry, Gerard Donovan. This is also a small book, but it's, oh, if you are a dog lover, you will understand the man. If you're not, you will say, he's crazy, he's absolutely mad. The dog lovers will say, I get it, I get it. So we have a man also living in a cabin with thousands and thousands of books, something that we all would love. Lots of classics, uh, lots of books he read together with his father when he was young, and he has good memories. And the thing he loves the most is just to go on hikes with his dog and then come home and have a, a warm cup of chocolate and uh, a warm fire and a good book and, and the dog at his feet. And at a certain point, he hears a gunshot and his dog is killed. And then the book starts. So this is a story about grief and revenge. You'll understand. Read it. You'll love it. Read it. A book that just came out this year is The House of Doors by Tan Tuan Eng. This was my first Tan Tuan Eng that I've read and I was absolutely blown away by it. This is a story of a couple who lives in uh, Kuala Lumpur, and um, this is set in the 20s somewhere. And uh, they meet Willie, and Willie is actually Som William Somerset Mom and his uh, secretary. And first she is appalled by his lifestyle, because he's gay, of course, but he's also married, and actually he's on the run for his wife, and uh, yeah. He wants to live his lifestyle, and uh, yeah, it's it's an absolutely brilliant, brilliant book, and uh, especially the wife, her, the way she evolves throughout the book is is marvelous. It's absolutely brilliant, and on the other hand, she has a story to tell of a best friend who is on trial for murder, and William Somerset Mom, who is in um, a writer's block, a block for a very long time. He wants to hear about that story of a white woman who is in, on trial of murder 
she has murdered a man who wanted to rape her. And uh, yeah, it's a very interesting, a very good book. Then the next book is The Consequences by Nina Weijs. Now, Nina Weijs is actually not really a novelist. She's more of a sort of writer like you have Joan Didion. Her debut was a novel, and that's The Consequences, and I was blown away by it. It is not a perfect book by any means, but it's, it is a thrilling book, and it was a book that blew me away. So it's about a woman who is an artist and she asks a man to follow her and take pictures of her. And he doesn't understand why. And that's where the book is about. That's all you need to know. It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Then a book that is maybe not the biggest literary work, but it was the book that made a huge impact on me. At that moment of time, I really understood what the author was trying to do. And yeah, I, I, it really hit home with me. And that's Quiet Chaos by Sandro Veronese. Sandro Veronese, people talk about him mostly by the hummingbird, that some loved, others hate. Um, I like Sandro Veronese a lot. I really loved A Quiet Chaos and, or Chaos Calmo and um, the, com uh, the Commander, which uh, just came out. Uh, it's also a movie that just came out. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a brilliant author. Now, what is A Quiet Chaos about? So uh, a man is with his brother at the beach in Italy and uh, they see a very wealthy woman drowning and uh, they do everything they can to um, save her. And finally, she is saved. And then when he comes home, he sees that on his driveway, there's uh, ambulances and... Uh, police and uh, people are in a state and, and uh, he realizes that his wife uh, is dead. She took a nasty fall, she was picking some apples or something and she fell from a ladder. And he feels tremendous guilt because he spent his time at the beach saving another woman while he had to be at home to save his wife. They have one girl, one little girl. She's eight, nine. And uh, this happens during summer recess. And uh, when it's time to go back to school, he takes her to school. And he says to her, I will wait here I, uh, when you come back. I will be here when you come back. And he waits the whole day at the square in front of the school for his daughter. And the day after, he does the same. And the day after, he does the same. And, uh, da, 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 and weeks go by, and every day, he stays in his car. And he starts working from his car. He meets people. And, yeah, he becomes sort of a legend. And um, while he gets more and more visitors, he, in a way... helps to get over his grief. It works to get over his grief. So it's, to me, it was a beautiful, beautiful book. I read it when my mom passed away. It was the same time. And uh, yeah, it helped me tremendously. I, For me, maybe it doesn't have the most literary value, but for me, it is the most important book in my life because it has so much emotional value and uh, yeah it it's a book that i will never forget and i will always talk about it with lots of love the next book has not been translated but i'm doing everything i can to do so so i'm talking to a publisher to have this translated and if they don't do it then 
I will go to another publisher because the English text is already available and it is really necessary that this book is published in English. Uh, it has won quite a few awards already. It's, uh, uh, it's published in French, in Flemish, of course, because it's a Flemish book, in um, Danish, in many European languages, but not in English. And the book is Trophy by Gaia Schouters. Trophy is about a Western man who likes hunting on big game. And um, he has a permit to shoot uh, one of the five, big five. And he travels to Africa and uh, he has his guide there and uh, they wait, they wait, they wait for um, that one specimen he wants to kill. But it doesn't show up. And then his guide gives him alternatives. And then the book really turns dark. And it shows us how corrupt the world of hunting is in Africa. It's all about money and disrespect of the locals. And it is a powerful book. It is really well written. And yeah, I, I love that book. I was blown away by it. I think it's brilliant. And that's why it was actually one of the books that made me start this channel. I really want this translated because I believe in this book. It's really good. Trophy by Gaier Schouters. Hopefully next year on your desk. The Road by Cormac McCarthy. I could have chosen uh, Blood Meridian or others, but uh, for me, The Road, I liked it more than Blood Meridian. The Road is an uh, apocalyptic novel about a, a man and his son trying to survive and trying to stay away from the dangerous people. And uh, I absolutely loved that book. Um, it really shows the love between father and son and yeah beautiful beautiful read it if you haven't already the next book is by another Nobel prize winner it's drive your plow over the bones of the dead by olga tokarchuk it is a brilliant novel about um a woman who is alone again that's one of my tropes so or what you call it. That's one of the things I like. I like loners. I like reading about loners. And um, so this woman, she's an old school teacher and she, to make some extra money, she is um, responsible to take care of a, a holiday park with a couple of houses and uh, she has to take care of that. And she says that there's a serial killer and uh, yeah, the, the police don't, doesn't really believe her, but then they have to believe her after a while. It's it's funny, it, it's well written, it is uh, beautiful. Another book that I really loved is uh, Last Summer in the City by Gianfranco Caligari. Gianfranco Caligari is a very well-known Italian author. Once again, I really like my Italian authors. And Last Summer in the City is about a young author who lives in Rome. And um, yeah, actually he doesn't do much. Uh, he drinks a lot and parties a lot. And then he finally meets a girl and they um, drive around in Rome on a hot summer day. And uh, he realizes that she is the love of his life and that this is their last day in Rome because it's time to move on and it's time to start a real life. And uh, yeah, it, it's so beautiful. I really, really loved it. And it's the way he describes Rome that it's the Rome that I know and experience. So... Yeah, I loved it. I really loved it. It's a beautiful, beautiful book. Next up is Fractured Soul by Akira Mizubayashi. 
I also think this will be eligible for the international booker. Uh, Akira Mizubayashi is a Japanese author, but he writes in French. And uh, he has written with Fractured Soul such a beautiful, touching book about a young boy uh, just before the Second World War who lives in Japan. And his father is um, a violinist, and he has invited a couple of Chinese friends. But you have to know, just before the Second World War, they are at war with China. And uh, to play Western music, Western classical music, I believe it's Wagner or something of the genre, and um, there's a raid. And... Um, the violin gets destroyed and his father is taken away together with the Ch um, Chinese people and they never return. So the little boy is alone and he is saved by one of the Japanese soldiers. And he is, um, after the war, he's adopted by a French couple. There he becomes a, a very well-known violin builder. Absolutely beautiful. Oh. So, 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 so beautiful. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> Next up is The Wonder by Emma Donoghue. I really enjoyed this book. This is so dark and gritty. I, oh, there's also the movie. So this is a story about um, uh, an English nurse that is invited to go to uh, Ireland. And she has to check upon a girl who hasn't eaten in 40 days and or four months and still is healthy and uh, yeah of course she knows that isn't isn't possible but um yeah uh, there's a lot going on and it's about poverty and it's about religious madness and all those things it's it's an absolute uh, captivating book and really well done i loved it the the movie is also great another book that really moved me and was absolutely stunning cantoras by Carol, carolina de robertis cantoras is the story of uh, women a, couple, a group of women that come together in a holiday home once a year and uh, some have relationships with each other but they are all married and uh, it is during a regime uh, I think it is set in Uruguay I'm not sure anymore it's, it's in um, a Latin American country that is under a regime or Venezuela, or whatever, I don't know anymore. And um, this is so well written and so beautiful. And it, it shows you how harsh regimes can be towards women and how difficult it is to live your life the way you want it in a macho society. It is... A celebration of love and a celebration of friendship, of true friendship and chosen family. Yeah. Capturas. Carolina de Robertis. Then another great book is The Opposite of a Person by Lieke Marsman. Now, um, this is also a Dutch novel. Lieke Marsman is a brilliant author, a brilliant uh, observer. And this is also a very short novel, but with lots of impact. So it is about uh, a young uh, biologist or something of the sorts. And she had difficulty finding a job and she lives in with her girlfriend. And the girlfriend is, yeah, quite well off, I believe, or has a career. Let's keep it to that. And uh, she looks a bit down on, on uh, the woman. And then finally, she finds a job in Italy where she is asked to uh, study the, the impact, the ecological impact of a power dam on the environment before and after it will be destroyed or demolished. Uh, it's an old dam and it doesn't generate enough power for the modern 
uh, needs and um, so they decide to uh, restore it like it was before and she is asked to to um, study the impact but it this is such a subtle but devious book I know Karen from uh, Roving Reader didn't even get that there was a homicide <laughs> It's so subtle. It is so subtle. And that's why I love this book. You really have to pay attention because there's a lot going on. The surface is quiet, but on the water, there's a lot going on. You really have to read this book. It's brilliant. The Opposite of a Person by Liga Marsmal. Another book that not many people have talked about, only two booktubers have talked about it, and that's... Uh, Fraser from uh, Springboard Thought and uh, Willow from Books and Bow. And it is a little, a, book, a little by Edward Carey. This is brilliant and gothic novel about uh, the life, the young life of Madame Tussaud. So it is weird and wonderful and, and magical and phenomenal and oh it's so brilliant read this book it is oh, such a magnificent magnificent book um uh, so she is born of course like everybody her mother is struggling really hard to survive her father was a victim of a war the prussian war i believe the french prussian war and his uh, he had a horrible head wound and uh, her mother takes um, her to a man, a doctor, and he is one of the first who makes a prosthesis, prosthesis um, for her, her father's jaw. And uh, But unfortunately, her father dies of an infection. And her mother decides to ask the man uh, who was yeah working on his father's jaw if she could live in with them with him uh together with her girl and uh he accepts and that night um her mother takes her own life and then we begin her story and it's flabbergasting it's really good really well written the next book are actually two books well there are two books that i want to talk about and they are very interconnected because they talk about each other in the book so the first book is uh, disturbance by philippe lanson uh, surviving charlie hebdo this is not a novel as such and the next one isn't either it are two biographies, but they are so well written that they read like an awful. Um, Philippe Lanson was, um, or still is, a uh, book critic. And um, at a certain point, um, F uh, Michel Houellebecq published a book uh, named um, Submission, and where he says that uh, the, the, the Arabic brothers are in power in France and yeah we are all uh, living now like people are living in Afghanistan and uh, he wrote Philippe Lanson wrote a very harsh uh, critique uh, because of that book and the day it was published it was all over the news but then Charlie Hebdo happened and he was working for Charlie Hebdo and when they were having their meeting about submission and his uh, harsh critique, the guys entered and shot everybody down and um, he was severely, severely wounded. And uh, he was taken to the hospital and um, he stayed there for two years. And uh, he talks about his yeah his, his his recovery and he never is negative he never talks with hate or yeah he, he never blames anybody for his own pain and his difficult times and it's absolutely beautiful it's absolutely beautiful 
Now, at the same time, you have Nastasia Martin, not at the same time, a couple of years later. And she is a biologist also, and uh, she uh, is way up north, uh, uh, Siberia, and uh, but almost close to the American border, where there's also, uh, 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 how do you call it, uh, a military compound. And she is climbing a mountain um, because she wants to study the wildlife there. And while she climbs the mountain, she is attacked by a bear. Strangely enough, she survives, but also very wounded at the jaw, just like Philippe Danson. And there starts a whole lot of trouble because what is a Westerner doing there? So close to um, um, a military compound. And then, yeah, they, they uh, help her, of course. Uh, they do surgery and, uh, yeah. But as soon as she can travel, the French government wants her back. They want her to treat her here. And um, then they have the doctors who think they are better than the Russian doctors, which I really aren't. And yeah, a lot of things go wrong. It's, uh, read these books, both books, and it's magnificent. It is such a different view on life and on suffering. So brilliantly done, both of them. Oh. Those are heroes. Those two are heroes. And the last book is Osbol. Osbol is written by Marit Kaplan. This is also a book that um, really moved me. It is Osbol is a small village, and Marit Kaplan talked to everybody and wrote their um, quotes down. But she wrote it down in a in a sort of rhythm. Uh, very short, like in, in in poetry, verses almost. But it's so moving and so real, and you really sense the heartbeat of that little village and the people who are new there and the people who are uh, craving for the old Osborne before the new world arrived and yeah it's uh it's brilliant it's absolutely brilliant this is a book to read uh, during the winter time and then uh, with a hot a cup of hot cocoa and oh yeah it's it's so beautiful it's absolutely stunning and the the story of the two friends is so so pure so beautiful so simple but beautiful so yeah that's it i hope you liked it and uh, enjoy your reading Talk to you later. Bye-bye.